<laughs> long story short, not that I wanted to say that I've been to the U.S. I only praise God for, for his faithfulness and what he does in my life and in the life of the ministry as well. More than anything else, it is wonderful to be back with the family that I love, with the children of God. And this is what God gave me in his own grace. And I cannot ask anything more than this. This was given by him after my dad's demise close to 19 years back. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it was ready-made. It was a lot of sweat and tears. And then, because of his grace, and since he is the one who leads, it continues to multiply, and I praise God. <clears throat> so I am just a servant like every, everybody else. So there is no boss here, I'm so glad, including myself. All that I tell people who are, who are doing different tasks here, I said, we are all servants, because that is what God said. The laborers are few. If you would have said supervisors, a lot of people would have come by now. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be a supervisor? That's the biggest problem in our organization also. After two years, they say, what next? If everybody wants to become a boss, who will be left? There will be all bosses and nobody working. <laughs> okay. So God was very clear. He said, I am the boss. You better do what I tell you to do. <clears throat> and that is what it is. <clears throat> so he's our master. <clears throat> Today's message <clears throat> is about one familiar word that has been the cause for pretty much everything it continues to be the cause for for the downfall of individuals for the downfall of organizations for the downfall of families and so on and so forth and that word is greed it's a very dangerous thing today's message is titled the grip of greed that's a strong grip by the way <laughs> the grip of greed is so strong and Jesus was very clear because as much as he talked or spoke about many different aspects while he lived on this earth, one thing that he continued to speak a lot more is about money and positions. And that is the theme in the Gospels. He spoke a lot because that is something that disturbs us and pinches us. We don't want to go there. We will go to those nice topics that give us comfort, that give us something else. But these are very, very touchy areas. And Jesus kept hammering this point. And we will look at one parable that is, uh, uh, it is very strange, you know. That's, that's how he always answers. Um, and it baffles me. Now, and that is the reason he is so knowledgeable and there is no limit to his knowledge and he is all powerful, all knowing God. And if you want to understand bits and pieces of that, if you continue to read the Gospels repeatedly, you will know as to how deep are his thoughts and how strange are his thoughts. Whenever somebody went to him with a question or whenever went to him with a problem, or whenever somebody went to him to kind of trap him and put him in trouble, he had no issues answering back with a question or quoting a situation or telling a story and people after hearing it would never ask again. <laughs> that is amazing. You go and read, randomly pick up anything and look at the end, read the whole thing, how it ends is amazing. They will either say, who is this? How is he speaking? Such things we never heard, we don't understand and things like that. And today, we will pick up a situation where Jesus, the problem uh, that came to him was something and the way he dealt was totally different. We pick up this story in Luke chapter 12 and we'll go through real fast. Luke chapter 12 was... 13 onwards. 13 to 21 is what we will meditate. The key focus being verse 21. Just quickly jump to verse 21 on the screen and in your Bibles as well, if you bring your Bibles. <clears throat> it is on the screen for us for convenience. Um, but I recommend you all bring your Bibles. So that is how you will learn to at least open it here. I'm sure you'll open it at home. It ends with this verse and that is the key. And that is what Jesus wanted to tell 
the person who came to him with a situation. So we will go to that. But the essence of what Jesus told is in this verse. This is how, we will get to know it quickly. This is how it will be. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich towards shout not rich towards God but you are rich towards your self so as God speaks to us through this parable the question that you and I have to answer the introspection that you and I should do is am I truly rich towards him and that answer you need to do I need to answer that question not just today but the, in every day of my life and we will also try and understand what does it mean to be rich towards God and how can I be rich towards God yes no whatever we are it is because of his grace and that is what Jesus tries to drive by telling this that here is a person who thought he was all made by himself you know and the theme is this word called greed greed whoever has amassed wealth and whatever situations they are in the answer for that both in India or America wherever it is I don't want to take names it is going live and it is it is not right on my part to comment and judge about anybody but whatever we get to read the only indication is that people were not satisfied with whatever they had and they looked at ways and means legal illegal whatever it is to try to gain more than what is needed and that is what greed does somebody put it very nicely I write down whatever I keep I keep reading a lot and that's the only thing I do during my free time anything related to his word and I go back and check again not that I base my messages on one single author or certain uh, books per se but I continue to gather information and finally wait upon him and bring it and that's how I deliver these messages this is not on not my own it is given by him and I continue to do that and keep digging as much as possible somebody said money can be hazardous or helpful the way you look at money <laughs> hazardous is dangerous money could be dangerous or helpful it could either diminish our soul or develop our soul and that depends on how you are looking or treating money most important and the old saying says money can buy everything yes money can buy everything no money can buy a lot of things not everything there are certain things everybody understands that money can never ever buy money can never ever buy <clears throat> so if we have to truly understand whether I am rich towards God or not and how is money in my life it will be seen if you go back and do this exercise not today but probably as a daily on a daily basis or in a month I don't have this habit but I surely should uh, develop this habit while I was preparing this message I think that is one thing that I said I'll probably start doing which I which I kept telling many a times I didn't is how we spend our money please remember this this is not a this is not some rocket science as they call it in the corporate world it's simple common sense how you and I spend our money reveals how much we have love towards the things of God and things of this world please write down somewhere or remember this if you truly want to understand whatever is your earning whatever is your income from wherever it is coming leave it aside but you and I continue to spend yes no maybe some people don't spend at all that's not a right thing some people like me spend everything and more than required swipe spend and swipe God never said swipe he said spend 
but this generation is used to both spending and swiping then we are wiping <laughs> finally <laughs> right so okay so how please this is a very practical thing i am not giving a finance uh, seminar or lecture my colleague is out here <laughs> Uh, I belong, we all work in the finance world, so it's so natural of us to talk about these terms, but um, being from this finance field for a long, long time in my career, but yet when I come, though, of the many complaints that my wife has, uh, I hope she's not here. Okay. His <laughs> one big complaint is my spending. Not that I, sp I, I, I sp spend on useless things, but I, I don't really think as much. But we are stewards of both our time and our treasure. We are stewards, we are not owners. You know the word steward. Steward is taking care. There is a responsibility. How you spend your time, how you spend your treasure, on what you spend your time and what you spend your treasure on is very important to him. To him. And today's message is about how we are spending that money that we have, which is given by God, He is the source. And He is giving it through the company that you're working for. If you're employed, if you're in a business, it's coming through that or through something else. The source is Him. That is most important. The day we say the source is my organization, in all probability, it may not survive. Or if it survives, you will not survive. <laughs> that is for sure. And this is something I always remember because of the uh, kind of industry that we are in. He is the one who is providing through a lot of things. But the question is, you and I will know about our love towards God, the things related to God, and our love towards the things related to the world based on where this money went. As simple as that. As simple as that. So that is how you calculate. If you and I continue to spend more money towards the love of this world and things related more towards this world, then that destroys our soul. And if we spend more on things related to Him, that will develop our soul. So, this ring of greed that grip is too very powerful. Let us get into this situation or the context quickly and understand what God is trying to tell and we'll break it up into three parts. We will go to Luke chapter 12 verse 13 and, and read from there. <coughs> Someone in the crowd <coughs> said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. So it's a property dispute. Real estate. If somebody belongs to the real estate, forgive me. Real estate is a big problem in itself. It's the most dangerous as far as I know. All problems come because of property matters. And that's the reason it is better not to have any property. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you one small illustration as we move on. But So, <clears throat> here is somebody. He's coming to Jesus. He's telling, Sir, I have a property issue with my brother. And what do you have to do? <laughs> you better... Divide this. So Jesus doesn't address this problem at all. He goes somewhere else. Because he goes to a spiritual situation. The, the issue he brings about there is, this is not what I'm here for. I am here to settle the issue about your heart. The matter is all about heart. Why did this person come in the first place to talk about division of property is because of something that is deep within the heart. Are you getting the point? That is what Jesus pointed out. Not that he was not able to take a decision. Not that he wanted to do something like this. He said, that if you see the answer in verse 14, he says, Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you and me? You and your brother settle. But I will talk about something which is more important for me. And he goes on to explain and talk about a parable. Are you getting the point? So that is what it is. Jesus takes a step deeper and he says the matter is not about this property the matter is about why you are so desperate 
to get these worldly things at the cost of division between family. Are you getting the point? At the cost of breaking up. And I am sure back in those days, properties more were more of of inheritance. The, this fellow who would have come in there, sorry to you I'm, that I am using that word, whoever came there is not that he worked hard and got that. It is, when it is inheritance, it comes from our parents, right? And there is a situation, he says, I want this to be divided. So, the question is about our desires. When our desire is driven by greed, today's word is all about greed. The title of the message is, The Grip of Greed. The Grip of Greed. That is powerful. It, it could be money, it could be something else. Today we are just talking about money, but greed could be anything. Please, please understand. Greed could be anything that you are obsessed with. That doesn't belong to you, but you want it. That is what greed is all about. And when you get into that situation, that captures you. You, are, you and I are driven by it. Take, take anything. And that's the reason I said, whatever happened in this corporate world and uh, or even in the political front, in our country, in any country, the one-line answer to all of this is people have become greedy. Corporations have become greedy. And because of this, the whole thing fell apart. So Jesus didn't really bother about the problem there. He says in verse 15, okay, let me tell you something. You've come to me for the settlement of property issue, but Jesus went to an issue about uh, the desire of that person. The desire of that person. He says, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. When they came there, for the property to be settled. He said, we want you to be the judge <coughs> and do this arbitration, which means separation. And Jesus said, I'm not there to do that. But this is a matter of your heart. The way you people are thinking. There is a deeper problem which I want to address. And he says, the problem is about all kinds of greed. And a man's life, this is most important, please remember, the world measures people on this basis. This is world's measurement. That is, a man's life is based on abundance, right? From a smaller car, you go to bigger car, people think about what a blessed life. They don't know how many loans are there. <laughs> are you getting the point? Bigger house, there will be bigger loan. And the interest rates will fluctuate. You call it, again I'm going to my finance terminology, forgive me. The biggest question that I have by, from a finance standpoint is right, from an accounting standpoint is right, but from a practical standpoint, till I have a loan, it is not an asset, it's a liability. But what will we say? I've got a house. It is not yours, sir, it is on that bank's name. After 30 years, who says you'll be there or I'll be there? After 30 years or 20 years or 15 years, if you paid the amount on time, three times more than what you've taken, grow privation you did today. Please come to our house warming, your house. Ah. Who told? That is HDFC's house or ICICI house? Or whatever it is. And again, you have taken one personal loan to treat people because you have to give two times non veg two types. Why? Now, house warming, no? First and last time we will ever take a house. And you did all of this stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm not against people who are. But, but God says. In my thoughts, he is telling, I am very clear, my measurement is exactly opposite. He says, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. He wants to set it right. He says, you and I should be driven by the right desires, not with a desire to grab more. Greedy desires will lead you and me to destruction. Take any, any life which is mentioned in the Bible or even look at the regular secular world and see the so-called big, big names. At one point in time, they were highly respected. 
back in the US or here because that is where the major scams happened, unfortunately. All so-called big people. But end of the day, it is because of their greed and that has gripped them. I'm telling you money talks. Do you know money talks? I'll tell you how will it look. You are in a line. There are 20 people before you. There is one security guard there. If you stand in the line and wait for your turn, it will be evening. But if you take out 100 rupees and give to the security guard, he will take you to the front. That is what money talks. Are you getting the point? And it talks to us also. I am telling you, think about it. This generation is not getting this. Money talks to us also. They say, if you don't have enough of me, you can't do much in this world. Are you getting the point? That is what money is telling. You need more of me. You earn more. What is 10% hike? Eh, not. Our parents had 2% hike. But we want 15% hike, we want 20% hike. Whatever. Money talks. And if you are carried away with that thought process, then the difficulty is it will start controlling us or having us. It is not about what we have in our lives. Please remember. Do you have him and do you know him? End of the day, that's what matters. It's not about what I have from a worldly, secular possession standpoint, whatever money, doesn't matter. Am I having him? Am I having him? So, Jesus is talking about desire. And we'll go to the next verse. And he says, and he told them this parable. Very interesting, very familiar, very familiar parable. And it not only talks about desire, but decisions. Please remember, <clears throat> If we have a worldly desire, or rather let me put it in a different way, if we are led by greed, that is what verse 15 says, be careful about different kinds of greed. Getting more is one thing. Money is one type. There are various types of greed we are not getting in there. Please be careful about different type of greeds because a man's life does not consist. The world says, the world looks at you and me based on what we have physically. What is the house that you are staying? What is the kind of clothes that you are wearing? And so on and so forth. There is no end to it. Thanks for the advertising that is happening. Everything that we see, the way it is advertised, the immediate desire is, if I don't have it, my life is not complete. Right? We feel something is missing. And we start thinking of how do I get what I'm seeing. It doesn't consist. So how is your desire being driven? That is one thing that you may want to introspect and see. Is it because of greed or is it because of godly desires? What is driving you and me? In our day-to-day -day life, as God's children, we should be careful. We are here in this world, while the Bible says we are pilgrims and strangers in this world. But when, when somebody looks at our life, in all probability, we are no different than so many others. We are no different than so many others. That our lives are no different. And that is where is the problem. What are you and I driven with? Godly desires. Godliness with contentment, God's word says, is great joy. I love that verse. Godliness with contentment is great joy. And a lot of people are never ever content. So we saw desires. So be careful is what God is telling. These people came, these brothers came and they said, we want you to help us in separating this property. Jesus says, I am not here to do that. But let me tell you something. There is a heart problem with you. There is an issue basically in your heart. It is about greed. And let me tell you a story and that is where he goes. And if based on 
from where your desires and my desires creep or start that is how our decisions are made go back and think i'm telling a lot of things for you to go back it's important based on where the desire started your decision will follow accordingly these two are interlinked if it is a godly desire that will lead to a godly decision if it is a if it is a desire based on greed it will lead to a decision which is going to ultimately lead you to destruction and that is what it is so he says a very familiar story that we all know and he told them this parable the ground of a rich man produced good crop there is nothing wrong there on the face of it that is not the problem jesus is not telling you know having a good crop is a problem jesus is not telling getting good possessions is a problem jesus is not telling getting a good hike is a problem jesus is not telling getting into a good job is a problem but the problem is next he says in verse 17 it says then from here on it is all about i i myself that i factor that's why sometime back i told everything is now what i 10 i 20 i phone i pad i paid then i am over it's finish okay <laughs> he thought to himself what shall i do the point is who gave that crop jesus if you see the parables it's beautiful back then you know he was always relating to the context that is the beauty of god's word and that is what baffles me during the time that jesus lived he picked up all parables let every common man will understand are you getting the point every back then there was farming and nothing else there was farming and fishing yes no there was nothing else and if you see any of that he always related he said look at the tree or look at that and this and normal common people will understand where he what he is speaking about and he interlinked it to a deep spiritual truth the same thing there is this farmer and that year he had a great crop is it is it because of the good manure that he used ultimately who gives the produce when it comes to sowing and reaping it is him right any prodi from agriculture background will understand end of the day after all this you know plowing and sowing the seed and all what do farmers wait for the free water that the government is giving <laughs> the rain right that is the natural way and timely rain if it rains when the when it is a time of harvesting everything is gone and why do farmers commit suicide because they say are the crop that was right there all our hopes were there and it washed away but if it is a timely rain then if this person what god is trying to get to is look at this fellow this is what greed is the moment you have something more you immediately forget who is the one who is giving it are you getting it this person totally forgot and he is may please remember he is basing that's what i told he is basing his decisions on the greedy desires if the desire came from god his decision would have been something else he would have thought about are this is the first time that i received something more so maybe i will give it to somebody who is probably in need are you getting the point and that is what is that is the difference he didn't think of anything he didn't think about somebody else he didn't about trying to donate or do something and talk about god and praise god nothing if you see there is nothing it is all about i i and i he didn't have anything he said what shall i do he thought to himself what shall i do i have no place to store my crop who are are from english all of these are called personal nouns yes no i am not good in english don't come to me for grammar there is sima back she will she will teach <laughs> but this is what it is that i 
he thought to himself, what shall I do? Because his desire is about having more. Greedy desires are leading to decisions that are destroying his soul. So please be very careful. Please be very careful. You and I need God's help in this area more than anything else. This is the area because the kind of world that we are living in, everything is in comparison about what we have and nothing else. Where is your son studying? Where do you stay? How much do you earn? Which hotel do you go and eat? So on and so forth. It is all about this. It is all about this. And if you go to verse 17, is verse 18. Let us go to verse 18, please, quickly. Then he said, this is what who will do? I will do. So he is coming to a decision. A decision where God is not involved. Are you getting it? If he acknowledged that what he received this year, more than anything, it was a good crop. If he had some thoughts about God, he would have said, Lord, I thank you for what you gave me. I never expected this crop. It has made me rich, but it happened only because of you. And I want to do something for you. I told him right in the beginning. How you spend your money, on what you and I spend our money, if our love towards the world is more, then you and I end up spending more towards that. If our love is more towards the things of the Lord, then I spend more here. And that is how it is. That settles the matter. Here there is no God whatsoever. So the greedy desire led to decisions which were also greedy as well. He, he thought, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones and there I will store all my grain, my goods. It's totally 11 times this personal noun comes. 11 times. It's all about me, me, me. His total focus is his newfound prosperity. Are you getting the point? Sometimes suddenly something happens out of the blue. And suddenly from a motorcycle you will go into a four-wheeler. Ah, you don't know how to handle. You give it to him, he will handle. The problem is you want to handle. So here, it's, if I want to use regular normal um, you know, jargon, it's, it's suddenly... There is something more that he has and he feels, you know, let me do something. Let me handle it the way I want to. And let us move on, verse 19. And he says, and I will say what? To myself. You have plenty of things laid up for many years. Take it easy. Hyderabad language. Nizami style. Light leo bai. Kalikisne deka. All of that stuff. Take it easy. Eat, drink and many, come to high tech city along with me, you'll find hundreds of people like this. Take it easy. Who has seen tomorrow? And that is how a lot of decisions are made. With no thought about God. And I'm talking to believers who have known him. And as I said, we will come to that, we're losing time. The essence of all of this, why did God bring this up? Is just to make one point. Are you rich towards God or are you rich towards something else? That is where he brings. And because of this decision, this I, 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 with no thought about God, and that is where the destiny factor comes. And verse 20 and 21, he says, But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared. Then who will get what you have pre prepared for yourself? What is this? Think deeply. This farmer failed to invest in the right things. Are you getting it? He failed to invest in the right things. And God wants us to invest in the right things that are things related to Him. Because this investment 
this investment will always multiply will always multiply and i spoke about time and treasure one side you might think that you are spending time when you come to church i spent one and a half hours today i spent two hours god doesn't treat it that way god says you have invested this time with me hallelujah <laughs> invested and when we invest we all know a right investment always brings profit or gain yes no and jesus is a partner who never failed no ways that is why he said one second or one minute is like a thousand days that is how it is so that is where jesus was getting into he said please understand i want you to invest in the right things whether it is money or treasure or whatever it is please time is falling by time is just slipping by it is going before you realize march is over so first three months of 2013 is over and before you realize another three months will go by and that's how it is then what have you done with the time that god has given you and what have you done with the treasure that god has given you where are you investing well you need to invest certain things from a worldly standpoint god speaks of balance i fully agree but if there is imbalance then that is when you and i need to correct ourselves because our god is a god of balance our god is a perfect example of what it means to balance he is balancing this entire creation if there is slight imbalance you know what will happen in respect of all this global warming or whatever people talk of this creation is still being held by him he made it with his word and he created the right balance in everything that he created everything that he created and he wants that same right balance in our lives so when it comes to two things today we are just meditating about two things what where is our love our love towards the things of this world and our love towards the things of the lord and where you spend your time and that is where the outcome is so let us go back how he ended this story it started with a real estate problem jesus didn't solve or talk about real estate he said the problem is about the heart it is about greed all kinds of greed the grip of greed is powerful that is what we have meditated today the grip of greed is powerful please ask god strength to break that grip whichever it is and verse 21 he says this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich towards god so what does it mean to be rich towards god we will look at few things and quickly in the next few minutes we will look at how do i become rich towards god and that is the only thing that matters as we complete this worldly life whenever it comes to an end either it will end by way of we going there or it will end if he comes and takes us and that is what it is when that happens where do you and i fall when god looks at our life and our balance sheet today it was all finance terms <laughs> when he sees our investments only what that you and i invest towards godly things will not only remain but will multiply so god says if somebody is storing up things for himself and not thinking of me that person is not rich towards god first thing what does it mean to be rich towards god is living with the knowledge that my life was made for him that is what it means to be rich towards god living this life with the knowledge that this life was made not for me but for him 
when you have that thought that is one of the things what does it mean to be rich towards god is when i have this thought that god gave me this life and i live it for him he gave it because it was made for him and my heart is drawn towards god and not towards my own desires that is being rich towards god real desires desires that he places in our lives desires that are related to him and that is what is being rich and counting this life in god more valuable than anything in this world the life that we have in god is more valuable than anything that we have on this earth hallelujah than anything i am telling you if you have <coughs> these three basic things in your mind you and i will start being rich towards god and we will look at how to be rich towards god few things one is seek and treasure christ every day we are running short of time so that i'm just moving on seeking and treasuring christ every day guarding our life our heart from materialism and there is so much of materialism these days the entire advertising industry is all about materialism and nothing else you whether you watch cartoon or news or whatever is there will be enough ads to disturb you which point out saying that there is something missing in your life you better get it i told in the beginning in the middle that money talks in different ways <laughs> and that is one of the ways and then pray and trust god for every need for every need as an example not to again bring about my us trip but supposing i didn't bring dollars from there by the way it is <laughs> supposing somebody gave me 2 3 thousand dollars nobody gave me sir <laughs> okay and i came and i go to capri because i am feeling very dry and thirsty to have chai i'll take out 10 dollars will he accept <laughs> no he will say what i need rupees right if i have that much of money back in the us i am a rich person please understand i am a rich person but with that money i come to this country where that is not the currency i will be the poorest person are you getting the point i will be rich only when i go to a bank or an exchanger and say here it is you take this and give me that is what it is if you want to be rich towards god you exchange the love of the things of this world with the love of the things of the world things of god that's how it is hallelujah are you getting the point unless you exchange because a lot of things already in our heart where we have so much about this world and god is telling i want you to be rich towards me if you want to be rich towards him you and i have to exchange some things you have love of lot of things in this world then some things you you exchange to the love of the things of this love of the things of god and when that exchange happens you and i will be truly rich towards god let's bow our heads in prayer for the word that god gave us the issue was something else the issue was something else but jesus touched a deeper point to those brothers he says why are you talking about division of property and you want this division to happen because of your greed because of your greed and god is telling a man's life does not consist 
of the things that he or she possesses. There is nothing wrong in having, having things. There is nothing wrong in living in nice houses. There is nothing wrong in being in a good job and earning. There is nothing wrong. But in all of this, if you have left God aside, then there is a big problem. The problem is keeping him aside and saying, it is I who is now in this situation. It is my house. It is my, my, my. And that is where is the issue. Do we want to sit right in his presence? <coughs> Have you been rich towards God? That means rich towards the things that relate to him. Do you want to exchange something? And say, during this time of prayer, that Lord, I have never been rich towards you. I hardly gave you time, I hardly gave you any money, and I hardly did anything for you. I was so occupied with so many worldly things that I never even thought that where I am leading this life. I want to set it right. Say, Lord, <coughs> I want to do certain exchange. I'll cutting, I will cut down on my time that I spend on unnecessary things and start spending more time in reading your word and praying. Or something else. Whichever area that God has spoken to you. Say, oh master, it matters to me. I want to invest in the right things, the things that relate to you. Not the things that relate to this world. And God will give you that help. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, God, for the word that you gave us. You are a God who God, a God who speaks. You are a God, a God who reveals. And you have done it all over again. Thank you for opening up our thoughts and for helping us see where we stand when it comes to being rich towards you. The grip of greed, O oh Master, we realize is too very powerful. Help us to break that so that we are careful about all kinds of greed. We thank and praise you for your word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.